Hey everyone, Nick here. Welcome to episode four of Geared Up. Today we're gonna to be reviewing the Zero SRF. I've got my good buddy Tyler behind camera here. We're at Hollywood Electrics in Hollywood, California in his little shop here. And uh, Tyler, let's go ahead and get you behind the camera here. Make, 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 make money, make money, earn, earn, earn money, grow money, build money, hurt money. <sighs> How's it feel to be back? Feels great, man. You ready? Excited, let's do it. I just kind of want to give you an idea that I'm not coming from a biased perspective. Um, I literally work at an electric motorcycle shop that sells zero motorcycles. So I just want you to understand when I'm telling you certain specifics about this motorcycle, it's in a, in a broader spectrum. And me personally, I love electric motorcycles. I love gas motorcycles. All right, guys, so this bad man pajama over my shoulder is Zero's newest, latest, and greatest SRF. It's superseding the SR, which is a much different looking motorcycle. It's a great motorcycle. However, this one kind of tipped the teeter with uh, what the consumers really wanted. They wanted a more aesthetically pleasing bike that is more comparable to the gas bikes out there. I myself personally think it looks a lot like a KTM Duke, like a 990 or something like that. But you know, performance wise, it's, it's just ridiculous numbers. You know, you're looking at 140 foot pounds of torque, uh, 110 horsepower out of something that gets almost instantaneous torque. So if you can only imagine what that sensation is like, uh, anyone that's ever been in a, in a you know, a Tesla in ludicrous mode. So it's just boom, you're just thrown back into your seat and you're holding on for dear life with the usability factor behind it, where you can drive it to work and you're not strung out driving some crazy race machine and you know, every single light's a racetrack, it's, it's, it's up to you. If you're comparing it to other zeros, that's that's one realm we'll look at, as opposed to just an electric motorcycle in general. It's much more refined. I mean, the thing, it has a TFT dash, you got 43 millimeter PPF works from Showa, you got dual rotors, dual calipers, you got a 160 rear, you got a huge belt, got a huge motor, just ridiculous power anywhere through the power band, or it could be mellow. You could literally cruise into work, no one hears you, you're just, just cruising by. It's the badass bike that everyone wants and it's the super mellow commuter that you want in one package. So talking about uh, maintenance and such, um, that's one of our favorite things to talk about here in the electric bike realm because there's such little amounts of it. Or as we're talking about gas bikes, my bike personally right now, I need to clean my injectors. It's stuttering, it's frustrating as all hell. It just happened out of nowhere, bad tank of gas or something. but. There's just so many more physical moving parts in the motorcycle, there's gonna be more stuff to fix. When you come to electric realm, you're looking at a motor that spins on two bearings. The only other things that are physically moving on the motorcycle are let's say your wheels, your belt, and your brakes. So those are the only things you're really servicing on this bike. Tires, brakes, belt. Those are your moving parts that are wear items. Anything else is covered, one, hard parts, two, your warranty, second, Battery, five-year warranty. So industry leading in warranty, not patting them on the backs, but it's nice to have that. If something hit the fan, it's nice to be covered. Any Japanese manufacturer gives you a one-year warranty off the lot. It's not a lot of time. Most people barely put 10K on a bike in a year. But in general, you're not doing chain maintenance every 5K. You're not doing valve jobs every, you know, depending on the bike, eight to 15K. You're not doing air filters, spark plugs, you're not doing oil changes, anything that has fluid to do with the bike. You're not worrying about your gearbox, slipping gears, burning your clutch, you're not, none of that. You literally key the bike on and you go. That being said, it depends on the type of person you are. Are you the type of person that doesn't want to worry about your bike when you throw a leg over? If you don't want to worry about that stuff, sure, a mechanic can take care of it. How much does that mechanic cost? It's it's work, you know? People have problems paying mechanics for, for labor, but they don't realize that there's labor involved. You know, if, if you want to put 10 years of knowledge behind you, you could charge someone whatever you want for your knowledge. It doesn't matter if it takes me 10 minutes or two hours, you're paying for 10 years worth of knowledge when I work on your bike. That's why the labor rates are what they are. So it's very user friendly when it comes to the maintenance aspect. As if it's already not weird enough to be holding a camera out on the street and filming a random motorcycle. I'm also wearing a full leather suit and hiding in the bushes trying to get the best shots. So people are definitely on edge as far as me filming. 
Obviously, when we're talking about electric vehicles, is how do you put juice in it? How are you gonna get where you're going? Uh, obviously, you're not gonna stop at your local Shell station or whatever station you go to. You can charge anywhere that has a level two station. Specifically for the SRF, you're looking um, on the standard bike that has the smallest charger possible from a very low state of charge to about 95%. You're looking at about four hours, okay? That's the hardest realm. That That's most likely you're not going to be there. Most people aren't riding to zero and then trying to charge all the way back up to 100. If you're charging in a, in a regular way or you're riding somewhere and you need some juice to continue going or get back home, you're looking at about an hour and a half. Specifically, this bike has a couple different trims that it comes in, just like gas bikes. You can get one that charges a little bit quicker. It's gonna cost you a little bit more, but in my personal opinion, that's the most important part about owning an electric motorcycle. These have very large batteries, got 14.4 kilowatts of capacity, but how large your charger is dictates how quick that energy is gonna go back into your battery and then you can carry on and keep going. I always recommend people to get the quickest charger possible because you can go 100 miles to get where you're going. How fast can you go another 100 miles? It's very important with electric vehicles. You wanna make sure that you don't just go far, but you can go far again in a short period of time. I wanna be able to jump you know, stop at a coffee shop to rest my legs. I'm not gonna ride 100 plus more miles. My butt's gonna be aching. I don't care how good your seat is. And by the time I got a cup of coffee or a sandwich, my bike's charged enough to get me another 100 miles, you know? So it really, you know, it depends on what you're using it for. Most guys are commuting into work every day. Depending on their commute, you know, you have 20 to 50 mile commute. You don't even need to charge at work. You can just hop back on it and go home. How much juice do I have to get there? I mean, it's just a little different. It takes, you know, maybe a week or so to get used to it. And then it's just what you do. You get to charge your bike. As you guys know, I ride a, a leader bike. It's my weapon of choice, racing or just out having fun. I prefer not to have a heavier motorcycle, but it's because of the performance. So it gives me that torque I want. It gives me that horsepower. It gives me that top speed. I need that. This bike on the flip side and electric side doesn't leave me looking for more, which makes me question my own thoughts of why I ride the leader bike and the things that it does and what it can provide. This thing does better in a lot of aspects, uh, specifically with torque. Like I had spoke about before, torque is one of those things that gives you the feeling that you're going fast. Whether you are or, or not, it feels like you're going fast. Some of the fastest cars you might've been in I guarantee you have a lot of torque. It's gonna throw you way back in the seat and it's gonna make you feel like it's trying to rip you off of it. That's the feeling that I look for. This has oodles of torque, just ridiculous stupid amounts of torque. If it's too much for you, you throw it in eco mode, it's still gonna be fast. And I'm not trying to be like a commercial or anything like that. I haven't been on anything that felt faster. The new modern question is gas or electric? Which one's for you? Me personally, I'm gas all day long. You know, it says gearhead on my knuckles for a reason. So I'm not gonna knock it um, because it's not my absolute forte, but it is something that is absolutely an enjoyable experience as a motorcycle rider and someone that just appreciates, uh, you know, modern machinery. This thing is just a badass piece of machinery. Everything about it is refined and in the electric spectrum, it does everything very well. There's a lot of other manufacturers. Yeah, you might save some money. There's a reason. There's other manufacturers. You might spend a lot more money. You're not getting any more for that money. That's the most important part. How much are you getting for your dollar? It's a different realm of it. You know, when you pull up to the stop sign, you hear birds chirping and you can hear the lady talking on her cell phone in another car. It's one of those things you got to try. You just, you have to try it. Doesn't mean it's for you. At least try it. So I was about to head home and Tyler mentioned, you know, you should get on the bike because you're more of a new rider. And I am very happy that I did because it's very, very unique. I'd have to say that the difference between the two, you just have to get on and try it. Really, really simple. So Zero, I think you're doing a great job. I think you've definitely set the bar for what future electric bikes have to offer and maybe even gas bikes because ultimately you're competing for the market as far as, you know, which consumer is going to buy which bike. So yeah, I think you guys are doing a good job. All right guys, well there you have it. That is the 2020 Zero SRF. Big thank you to Tyler for jumping on another video to review this bike. If you guys are interested, you can book out a test ride online at hollywoodelectrics.com. Make sure you guys stop by and say hello to Tyler. He'll tell you all about the bike and any other bikes that they have. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.